Hi there, guys. We're going to look at situations of growth and decay by multipliers. In other words, exponential functions to do some modeling over the, the coming examples here. So um, we've got four different models here, which I'm going to talk about briefly. Uh, I'm going to show you what these things look like on a graph. Uh, then uh, we've got a few more things here. So we've got some sample data. Um, and creating an exponential model there algebraically, and then linking that to the form y equals a e to the kx. Um, also looking at a regression analysis on Excel. Um, then I've got a couple more examples on Excel as well. So an example of exponential decay, and then an example of linearizing as well. Um, and then finally, we've got... So that's up there as well. Finally, we've got a little bit about piecewise functions here. So I've got that on this Desmos graph here. And then finally, finally, we have a bit on logistic models as well, which, uh, which turns up in the uh, PDF that I've shared all about exponential modeling with some key examples. Okay, right. So let's go right back to the start. And we can see we've got some models here. We've got, let's just get this going on my iPad. Okay, so we've got this model. Yeah, okay, it's working. So we've got um, y equals a b to the x. Um, equivalently, we've got this model here to the right. This is exactly the same. It's just that b is now replaced by 1 plus r. So, for example, this now looks like uh, comp the compound interest formula where R, for example, could be 3%. Um, and so therefore you could do 100 times 1.03 to the power of N, for example. I've written N there just to relate it to compound interest. Um, but N, N doesn't necessarily need to be an integer in, in our case. Okay, so these two, they're kind of the same thing. Um, the one underneath is also the same thing. It's just that... If we just bracket this up, you can see by using the laws of indices here that e to the k is the same as b. So this is just another way of writing exactly the same thing. And it's useful um, sometimes to have this a e to the kx form because that's easy to differentiate and also because it's the form which is given um, with a regression analysis, which I'll talk about in a bit. Okay, um, you may also think that this is really similar to this situation. You probably realize what this is. This is a geometric progression or geometric sequence. Um, so the difference with geometric sequences is that n is only an integer. So you only have values, uh, you only have particular coordinate values, like, for example, in this case, 1, 3, and then you'll have 2, comma whatever it is, and so on. Okay, so you only have terms of a sequence. So this is similar because you still have a common ratio, just like here you have a common ratio, and here you have a common ratio as well. Okay, but um, we're not going to use this model here because it's looking at discrete data and not um, continuous data for x. Okay, so these are the models which we've got. Um, let's have a little look at the graphs. So here's a graph of showing exponential growth. The red one is crossing at five. Um, clearly, you may be using this to model lots of data points, but we're just talking about the pure mathematics at the moment. There we go. There's the red graph you can see here. And the green graph, we're seeing exponential decay here. We're seeing here that there's a 20% decrease as you go, for example, from 10, 0, 10 to, to 1, 8, and you can see there's 20% decrease because it says 0 0.8. Your multiplier is 20% less than 100% there. Okay, um, and you can also see that you have a 10% increase going from 0 0.5 to 1, 5.5. Okay, and you can see that our multiplier is 1.1. In other words, 10% more than 100%. Okay, uh, I've just put a couple more transformations of these in because... Potentially, you have data which doesn't quite look like this. Maybe, for example, you have great data which uh, tends towards an asymptote, 
So there we go, I've just lifted up this blue graph here by putting a plus 5 on the end. And now it's tending towards the asymptote of 5. So potentially your data looks like this. And then sometimes you have graphs which go in the other direction. And there's an example, for example, if you did a couple of reflections about the y-axis and the x-axis with the negatives, and then added 10 on, you can see that this is tending towards 10 and is showing um, a decay towards um, an asymptote limit there as well. Okay, right. So let's have a look at uh, the sample data which I made up. So I made up some sample data here. Second. Okay. So I made up some sample data here. And uh, here we go. We've got X and Y. Made up 15 points, which are kind of roughly following an exponential distribution. And I'm going to take, I'm going to make a model here by just taking a couple of key points. I definitely know that I want it to go through 0, 10. And I also think that 10, 50 is a good point. So I'm going to take those two points and I'm going to try and build a model uh, on that. So let's do that. So here we go. Exactly the same data over to the side here. Let me just flick to my iPad again. Okay. So exactly the same data here. And you can see that what, I'm, what I've set up on the right-hand side is y equals a b to the x. And hopefully you can see quite quickly that a is equal to 10. That is, when you put x, is in, x in as 0, b to the 0 is 1. And so you're going to get out y is equal to a. So you'll get y is equal to a when uh, you have that coordinate point of 0, 10. That's the first coordinate point there. Let's just highlight this. So when you have 0, 10 here, when you put 0 and 10 in, you quickly find out that a is equal to 10. Okay, so here's the new model. Now we just need to find out what b is. So if we substitute in another point, and in this case we'll take 10, 50, we put in that point, 10 there, 50 there. And at this point you could do a solve on your calculator, on your GDC, a solve n, or an n solve, or a solve, whatever your calculator does, to work out what the value of b is. You can put it in as x on your calculator. But some of you might know how to work with um, powers. So in this case, if you divide both sides by 10, we get to the next line. It's this line here. And if you take logs of both sides, this is one way of doing it. You can take learn the, the uh, natural log of both sides. Uh, that's log to the base e. If you take log of both sides, uh, when you take log of this, one of the rules of uh, laws of logs is to that you're able to bring the 10 to the front there. Uh, so hopefully you've done a bit on that before. But as I said, if you haven't, you can use solve n. And then at that point, you can divide by your 10. And then you can undo ln b by doing e to the power of ln b, which brings us back to b. Uh, e to the power of ln is the inverse function. E and ln are the inverse functions of each other, just like ln to the base uh, of e. Right? Ln e to the power of b is also equal to b as well. They undo each other. Okay, so if we take e to the power of this side, we're going to get b. If we take e to the power of this side, we're going to get this decimal number here. Okay, so now we've found what b is. We can now replace b in our model. And so this is our new model. And I've written b to three significant figures there as well. Okay, so that's one way of finding an exponential model algebraically. Now, we can link that back. Let's just flick back here. We can link that back to this model as well. We can change it to this model by doing an easy little bit of mathematics here. So you can see that I've written y equals 10 times 1.17 to the x. And if I just bracket up e to the k there, then you can compare the two functions and see that 1.17 is equal to e to the k. So just underneath, I've written that. So this and this are the same thing. And then if we undo e to the e to the power of by taking ln of both sides, 
we'll get k is equal to this, which is equal to this, 0 0.6, uh, 1, 6, 1 to 3 significant figures. And I've put that in here. It's meant to say a 6 there. Okay, so I've just changed my model so that it's in terms of e. That could be useful. Okay, it could be useful for differentiation, for example. Okay, so that's taking it from the model a b to the x to a e to the kx. And you can see that, by the way, I'm allowed to do this, e to the kx. I'm allowed to split that up simply because of my laws of indices there. Okay, um, let's have a look at the uh, regression analysis approach of this. So a regression analysis approach you can do on Excel or your GDC, put in all the points, and there's a formula which uh, the spreadsheet or your calculator will do for you, which will take into account every point, not just two of them. So if we have a little look at that one on here, let's just come up with this from scratch now. So if we just highlight this and let's insert a table, uh, sorry, a chart, and let's go scatter graph, let's insert this. There we go, we've got our scatter graph of the data. And then let's right click on the points and then we'll say add trend line and we'll say exponential. And for exponential, it won't provide R. If you look at uh, linear, it says R, oh no, it doesn't. Okay, I thought it did. It says R squared, actually. Okay, so if you look at the uh, exponential function, it will only provide an R squared value. We'll talk about that in a second. You can display the equation on there, and you can display the R squared value on there too. Okay, so now we've got another function. This is via um, exponential regression analysis. Okay, and we've got another function there, and we didn't need to do a lot of work at all. Okay, but we can look at the maths behind it. So if we look at this one here, we've got y equals 10.014 to the e to the 0 0.1602x. So if we now bracket this up just as we've done before, and we work out what this is, that should then tell us what b is. Okay, and that ultimately tells us what our multiplier is as well. So that's quite useful. And if we do that, I've done it over here to the side already, then we see that our multiplier in this case is 1.17374, which was really similar to this approach which we did here, but not, not quite the same, but actually slightly better because it's taken into account all of the points. You can see also that it doesn't exactly go through 10, because when it puts the whole line in, it's not necessarily hitting through 10 in this case. It's adjusted for all points. Okay, um, so there you go. That's your classic uh, regression analysis and also an algebraic approach for finding exponential functions. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention R squared. R squared is called your coefficient of determination it's really similar to the R value, the PMCC or the correlation coefficient. It's really similar to that, except for it's squared. So it's always positive. Um, you can search up coefficient of determination online and find out the exact definition of it. But basically, if you're close to one, then you've got a good fit for your data. So the line of best fit will be, if R squared is very close to one, then you have a really good fit for the data.